Hello everyone and thank you for inviting me to this conference. It's a big pleasure to be here and greetings from our museum from Lithuania on, uh, on behalf of our director and occasion of your anniversary, Estonian Museum. Uh, today I'll talk about Soviet deportations presented at our museum and I will focus on that collaboration between museum and deportees organization in the process of creation and presentation of deportees yurta exhibition. Uh, also, uh, this, this will be an example how museum has created space where civic society could contribute to dissemination of important ideas. Uh, talking about our museum, you see it's a very big museum, uh, 195 hectares, and we have more than 155 buildings, uh, 50, 150 buildings. Uh, the territory um, is so big with uh, natural landscape, and we present all five ethnographical regions of Lithuania and farmsteads. And, uh, all buildings mainly are from 19th century or beginning of 20th century. But in the middle of the museum, uh, among those old 19th century buildings, we have also Yurta, which is replica from Siberia, from where the Portis lived in, the, in such houses, so <laughs> not real houses, but when they were deported to Siberia. Um, of course, this, this uh, period of history is very dark, of course, not only for, Lith for Lithuanians, but also for Latvians and Estonians uh, as well, because uh, after occupation in 1940, uh, the next year, in 1941, 14th of June, we have the first wave of deportations to Siberia. And you can see uh, how big was distance. So at first that group, about 10,000 uh, residents of Lithuania were sent to Altai. And after the first winter, even deeper to the uh, north, to the River Lena Delta, and they had to walk in the islands. And this distance, it's 10,000 kilometers from Lithuania. <laughs> 10,000 kilometers from Lithuania and only 2,000 kilometers to North Polus. So it's almost in the in North Polus. And um, uh, of course, the living conditions were so, so cruel and the average temperature was like in, in summertime plus four, plus five degree in July. And people died here. Of, and in this particular place, uh, the families, women and, uh, and children were sent. Uh, and the husbands were separated and they went to concentration camps. And uh, of course, when the museum was created in 1966 and opened to the visitors in 1974, in the strategies of museum, nobody <laughs> could uh, think about such things as representing deportations and so and so, because it was not allowed to speak about such things at all. Uh, almost every family in Lithuania has deportees, has family members, grandparents or, or relatives who were sent to Siberia. But of course, in the times, it was forbidden to talk about such things. And only in 1989-88, that movement for uh, freedom began. And of course, then, uh, Exp expeditions to the Laptev Sea region began, and as you see, with the, uh, that 
all those uh, uh, survivors of uh, survivors of uh, deportations they wanted to discover the graves of their relatives in Siberia and um, restored graves and also erected monuments. Uh, in this slide you can see the ruins of that original yurta and one of our colleagues in 1989. Uh, and of course uh, all those deportees, they uh, created uh, brotherhood or organization, a public organization uniting people who were deported from Lithuania in 1941 and later reached the Yakut Republic as well as the, also their families also belong to this uh, organization. And one of the main goals of Laptevici Brotherhood uh, as they told, so this organization is to reveal the cruelty of Soviet genocide and strive to spread information among Lithuanian people and also um, abroad. They record past books, drawings, museum exhibits, videos. And uh, uh, in 1992, the representatives of this uh, organization came to the museum uh, and ask uh, if, if it is possible to present deportees' everyday life in our museum. Uh, the reaction of the museum staff, especially uh, of leaders uh, uh, of, of the museum was a little bit skeptical <laughs> because as, as someone of you mentioned already that Skansen uh, Open Year Museum is so beautiful, nice, and so and so, and suddenly such a uh, sad history. Yeah, and uh, the motives, also one of the motives, were why not to accept this organization, was that our museum is representing history from 18th century or 19th century till 1940. <laughs> Till the war, yes, when Lithuania was occupied. So one of the representatives of that organization, Aptevieci, said, Oh, it is sad that we were sent to Siberia in 1941. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it were good if we were sent in 1940. <laughs> yeah. So as I see uh, as as you see, the beginning was not very not very positive, but later in a uh, mm, with the help of other organizations, with the help of a Lithuanian um, who lives in outside, for example, in the United States, with the money of those relatives, the yurta was uh, created in the museum. Um, some years later, also deportation wagon was also presented in the museum. This was already with the help of government. And uh, uh, very important is the people who worked with that yurta. In that yurta, presenting uh, our history. And here you can see Irena Sulutas Pakowskine. Now she is 94 years old and still working in the museum. And she is a member of that organization, of that Brotherhood uh, Laptevieci. And first five or four years, she worked on, like volunteer, as a volunteer, and not getting salary at all. And every day coming from Kona Strum, Shishka's 25 kilometers, and explaining that her history and history of her friends and colleagues. Uh, she was sent to Siberia with the family when she was 13 years old, uh, with brother and mother. Uh, her mother died the next winter, and in uh, 1989, Irena went to that exhibition, uh, ex expedition and managed to discover the site of the grave of her mother, who had died being 40 years 
old. And, and uh, as you see, it took eight men a day and a half of intense picking and digging to reach the coffin buried in the permafrost. Uh, I think uh, you can imagine that there is eternal frost in that region and uh, no trees, no, no, <laughs> no plants are possible. And Yurta, which was built in our museum, is made from torf, but originally in Siberia it was made from moss. So <laughs> in Lithuania we cannot find such type of moss like was in Siberia. Uh, so we are very proud and very happy that we have Irena and she is our treasure and she explains um, and she can talk and talk and some, some one of you already uh, visited um, Irena in, at, in our museum. Uh, of course by providing an almost tangible experience of the tragedy of deportation. It is Rene's gripping testimony that makes this section most exceptional, this section of uh, resistance and uh, deportations we have in, in our museum. And uh, another thing is that it attracts a lot of tourists, uh, families, children, other groups and especially it is interesting for foreigners and uh, at, at first well, for example we have American uh, groups from United States so uh, just example that they spent uh, 45 minutes in the museum and one hour here near Yurta listening that story because it is very new for them and it's very touchable and and uh, really they, they began to cry and, and, and uh, a lot of people were impressed, so impressed that uh, we have books written about, uh, inspired by Irena and films and also um, I would like to show you a little bit movie which was also about this period uh, made by that uh, organization of the parties oh, sorry. first of all they started building barracks those barracks had a rough planking instead of the roof covered with moss and sand through the cracks above the powder snow seeped through and covered those sleeping in the bunks the barracks seemed to be one huge grave of ice. Ice covered ceilings, walls, floors. The hair of those sleeping used to freeze to the bunks during the night. The yurt was like the biggest vidurkis. Vakare grižus galima pakelti iki minus dviejų temperatūrą. Naktį jau sugulus, kadangi vis tiek kuriant nėra ką ir visi savo centimetruose guli, minus keturi, dažniausia. Yra buvę minus šeši, čia jau rečiau, bet, bet visada minusinė. Ir tik tai apie 12 birželio prasidėjus potviniui ledonešiui, kadangi jau lauke nulis plus vienas plus du, tai tada jau jurtoj šyla, pradžioj tai visi sėmenų į šalo vandenį, Nes jeigu jau čia detalė simant, jurtos neturėjo lūgų sienų, atvirų pavidalų. Tai buvo pora sprindžių juodo ledo viršui, ant sienų kažkiek ploniau, minus du tas viskas lašė, minus keturi, balta gražu. The polar night started in November. People were dying like flies due to hunger, the cold, scurvy and other diseases. When the parents died, children were taken to a separate orphan's barrack. The starving children would scratch the snow from the icy windows and eat it. Their heads were buzzing with the sole thought how to get some bread. The children had to work in brigades. They used to haul tree trunks, clay, planks, 
from the river up the steep slopes. In the winter time, the children had to work for 12, during the summer for 14 hours a day. Each morning there was one or a couple of children less. Many of them were shrieking while they died. No one paid any attention. Even their names were forgotten. Children of the deportees had to work with an axe or a saw since they were building the governmental log houses. And of course the groups of children and pupils and she is quite visible and this is photo with the President, former President Valdas Adamkus, also former President Dele Gribovskaita visited our yurta. And uh, every year we have annual meetings of deportees of that organization of uh, LAFTA um, uh, for commemoration of the first deportations in 1941. But every year, year by year, the the people who gathered here, the, the amount of them is decreasing because they are old and but nor, normally they come here to, to the museum with their um, children and grandchildren and we can say that that exposition place in the museum turned into a spiritual center of Laptevici and deportees, so this is also important uh, where the day of mourning and hope is marked every uh, year. And uh, sometimes the, someone from the government visits this uh, gathering. Uh, for example, this year our prime minister came to this gathering. So uh, this is important for museum, but it's also important for that community of uh, deportees. Uh, here also with president and <clears throat> and so and uh, that brotherhood uh, Laptevici they they are, are very active and uh, they help help museum and also yeah they were consultants to make several films movies and uh, another thing what I wanted to say about Irena that she was inspiration for, for many peoples um, to create film or book or, or, or somehow um, to commemorate these deportations. And here you can see uh, Ruta Shepetis from the United States and she wrote a novel. And that novel was quite <laughs> famous and translated into 27 languages and has been published in 43 countries and 20 American states added it to their list of literature recommended for schools and and Ruta Shepetis said that the reason she intended Between Shades of the Great to be a young adult novel was because she met many survivors in Lithuania who were themselves teenagers during the deportations and had a greater will to live than many of their adult interprets in that time. And after that novel, the film was created, uh, Ashes in the Snow, in 2018, based on that novel. So that novel was 
um, inspired by Irena and that goes um, further and this film was also very popular presenting the uh, deportations Tarpulku de Basuts in Lithuanian and here you can see also Irena. So uh, I think I have no time more but I just want to um, highlight that for museum it's important that collaboration with that uh, Laptevichi Brotherhood, so that organization of deportees and that has very big impact of different segments of museum visitors, children, families, foreign tourists, writers, journalists, and also political leaders. And for our, for, for our museum, it's really uh, important. So, thank you and... Questions and comments? Yes, please. I hope it doesn't seem insensitive. I really don't mean it that way. It's really beautiful that you are doing such a community work with members of uh, that Polia. And I was wondering, uh, keeping in mind that those people are aging population and they will be at some point not without us anymore, do you think there is a need to provide support to their descendants? And if there's an interest from the museum to do that, what do you think? Yes, of course, and, and we will try to do this. Um, and uh, we, we will try to do this, yeah. Thank you. And also we are recording uh, those memories and we have archives mm -hmm. um, in the museum of, of those reporters. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? So I, I know I can't um, turn my, um, my, my face to you because uh, you know, everybody else is also in this room and has to hear, but I have, I have this question about the museum space as a mm -hmm. potential uh, place of competition for various interest groups to mm -hmm. enter and have their past uh, exhibited. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, there are probably many other societies yeah. uh, in, or associations in, in uh, Lithuania who would, uh, who would perhaps see their heritage being a part of the open air museums. What about the uh, partisans, for example? They're mm -hmm. also a very powerful group. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, um, have, you, have you been approached? Mm -hmm. And what's the museum take on it? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, uh, we have another uh, group of deportees which were sent to si Siberia, but not to the Laptev Sea, but mm -hmm. to Kolyma. So they also come to our museum, but uh, they, they, they don't have such a yurta, but they just go to gather and to, to commemorate these uh, deportations. And about partisans, about resistance movement, we also have not far from yurta, a little bit down mm -hmm. <laughs> to the river, we have a partisan's bunker, which was erected uh, in 1998. Uh, and it becomes also quite popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, another um, thing that we, we are trying to make this bunker more alive, and we are uh, inviting uh, clubs of reconstruction of uh, soldiers, no, you know, those clubs of uh, interpreters of mm. history of uh, how it is in English, I, I think, <laughs> you know, so, so we are inviting um, them to reconstruct those uh, battles of partisans. I see. Yeah. Uh, other groups, um, of course, we are all also thinking as you are talking here about uh, Soviet times ex exhibitions, positions, but not all of museum board members are supporting this idea, so we are in the way of a discussion now mm -hmm. in that um, period, in the stage of discussion. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, has this inspired some more questions, perhaps? 
Well, uh, then thank you so thank much, Aista.